Good morning folks, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and this is video number four on making the doctor bag. The bag uh, like this one right here. See? Um, so, and the, after the last video, I, uh, I assigned the, uh, the homework of connecting the bars to the sides, and then the side pieces to the bottom piece. And since this is all hand sewn, like I said, it was kind of homework so that we could uh, get that done off camera and then come 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 back and uh, and do the next video. It's been over a week since I posted that video. I apologize. It's um, it, we're very busy around here, and I just had not had time to do my own homework, <laughs> so it didn't get sewn up until finally I finished it yesterday. Now um, I went ahead and clipped this together just to make sure everything was as it should be and all that. But uh, we're going to talk about the next steps, and um, yeah, we're going to get to it. So I'm going to start by just unclipping this so that it looks like what everyone else's should look like. I had a question. Um, somebody sent us a message on my Facebook page about these little clips. Um, they're plastic. Uh, they're just they're called sewing clips. Um, my friend Tony Bernier. Uh, showed them to me when uh, he came down and taught a class on making a flat cap um, and they're great little clips um, when I really need a heavy hold I still use a binder clip but these are absolutely great for just holding stuff together to sew um, so yeah I'm gonna pull all these little clips off here so that mine looks like yours looks and we're gonna talk about what we need to get done So far, I'm extremely happy with how well this one's turning out. It's actually turned out better than my uh, one over here that I tooled up and all that because, well, that was still in the prototype phase and it wasn't 100% uh, designed right. <laughs> um, so, okay, let me turn the camera down where you can see what we're doing here. Alrighty. So here we have just the big piece. Um, it goes all the way from bar to bar, and both of the sides were sewn to the bottom. I did about a three-eighths of an inch overlap on the seam. The uh, top portions were sewn to the bars. Um, and what we need to do here is we're going to trim those bars down so that they look right. Um, yeah. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We'll trim those bars down, and then also I need to attach this little doohickey the closure piece okay so we're gonna put it on there and what I want to do though is I want to sew all the way around it I don't want to just sew that little bit right there so I'll show you how I do that uh, basically I'll start sewing like right here and work my way up and all the way around and then when I get to an even even spot on the back that's when I'll start sewing it to the bag and continue going around um, but again we'll do that in a second so <clears throat> Um, to trim these bars, uh, you may have an idea of how you want to do it on your own, um, but basically we need to just trim evenly along that stitch line right there, and, um, and it'll go, you know, out and around that. We can use a round punch for that part right there if we have one, like a, a strap end punch. Um, and then, yeah, and I'm just going to take a... A trim knife or a scalpel or something and cut the rest of that nice and even along beside that stitch um, it could be difficult to get on camera just because when I stand this up um, it, but I'm gonna try to find an, an, an angle that makes it easy to see so to do that I'm gonna kind of roll this up a little bit try to get this to where maybe if I lean enough then uh, you'll see what I'm doing um, I've got to get a heavy something to hold up the back side of it and keep it from falling over on me. It's not heavy enough, but it can assist. All right, something to lean on. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just cut that out. Um, I, I could use a rotary cutter. I could use a scalpel with a ruler. Um, I think that my scalpel's next door. I believe Marsha came and borrowed it a while ago. And uh, so I'm going to use a rotary cutter. And I'm going to do this by hand, but by all means, if you would rather use a guide to do it, um, you know, a ruler or something that you can set up there and try to keep that straight, please feel free to do so. Don't, uh, don't think that just because I'm doing this this way, 
everybody else should too because i may very well screw this up so i'm going to take it and i'm going to start up here push it through the leather i'm just going to roll it slowly back to me trying to keep it even with the stitch line and that actually did pretty dang good now up here closer to that i'm going to have to cut it out in a way um, to where when it gets to where the bag side is over here that those kind of line up and I will have to use a scalpel on that um, I'm gonna grab a strap in punch and do that little end piece there I realize not everybody has access to a variety of strap in punches um, but they sure are handy if you're ever looking for what tools to buy next type thing. This is a one inch. And there we go. I'll cut off that little corner right there so that that looks nice and even. And uh, let's see, that's pretty good. All right, so again, I've got to grab my scalpel and, uh, and cut that little piece out right there. So I've got to pause the camera and run next door and grab my scalpel from, from Marsha. Just one second. Okay, got my scalpel out, put in a fresh blade. Now I'm going to reach back here with my hand and hold the back side of this. And I'm going to attempt to just keep cutting that same line very slowly with a fresh blade. There we go. Now it's up here against the bag side. Okay, um, right here, it's, I know it's hard to see from that angle. Let me get my fingers up out of the way. Right here is the bag side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a little corner there. There we go. All right, now, let me hold this over here where you can see the front of it. And I'll trim that out just a little bit more so that you can't see that, that um, corner there. And I just basically want it to look like it's going down behind the, uh, the side of the bag. Now once I do the edges and dye the edges and stuff, this won't show up near as much. Um, so that'll be good. Let me bring the camera up a little bit. So again, I'm just going to... Trim that little corner out just a little bit. And there we go. There's what it looks like. And after these edges are done, that's going to look great. Um, it does not look that great right this second because, you know, until I sand that and everything, it's just not looking right. Um, but that's going to be one of the very last steps for the entire bag. Now, I have to repeat that exact same thing three more times for the other side of that bar and then for both sides of the other bar. So I'm going to pause the camera so this doesn't become a very long video. I'm going to do those, and when I come back, um, all, all four sides of the, the bars will be done. All right. Um, so I trimmed all four of those uh, corners like we talked about and everything, and now I'm ready to attach the uh, this piece right here to the, um, to the bag itself. So, like I said, I want to stitch all the way around this just because it'll look really nice and clean. Um, you know, one of the biggest things with this bag is that all the accent or the stitching creates an accent to it. Um, I, I really like using the contrasting stitching. That's why I'm using the, the natural colored stitching with the, uh, with the darker leather and stuff. Um, so, I'm going to put a, a, a stitch groove all the way around this, and I will use my number seven um, overstitch wheel. And yeah, I'm going to stitch around this sucker. And again, what I'm going to do is when, when I'm ready to sew this, I'm going to start right here sewing. And I'm going to sew up and all the way around to here. Okay? And then I'm going to glue it to the bag and continue stitching back around to the beginning spot. So I hope that makes sense, but we'll, we're gonna do it together anyway, so. All right, hopefully I won't screw up the stitch groove though, because there's a lot of big round uh, pieces on this, so. 
when you're doing your stitch groove it's very uh, difficult uh, without a lot of practice to keep your groover perfectly perpendicular to where you are on the leather so when you're going around the corner you got to keep up with that corner turning your hand otherwise your stitch groove will go closer to or further away from your corner so I'm just going real nice and slow I'm trying to move my hand around the project enough now practiced on those two corners so I could make it up here and do this big round spot here I almost didn't stitch groove this because I was a little intimidated about this part right here but what would I be showing you if I uh, didn't do it another thing I say is you know do something that intimidates or scares you even if you think you may screw it up at least you'll have learned so there we go made it around it did pretty well there should be um, so I'm gonna take my stitch groover or my uh, overstitch wheel here and I'm gonna run it along that channel and again this is the seven stitches per inch it's what I've been using on the entire bag and again I'm gonna go real slow around this end piece here because I do have a tendency to run off if I get in a hurry run right off the edge of a rounded piece beginning and those stitches actually lined up really well there at the end okay so um, I'm gonna go ahead and once again I'm gonna start about where my name is there and I'm gonna poke all my holes going around and I will hand stitch that little bit up and then I will um, bring up the, the rest of the bag um, and I'll glue it to it and continue so I'm going to poke a whole bunch of holes here no need to have to do it on the camera I guess and uh, once I've done that little bit of stitching right there I'll turn the camera back on and show you how I'm going to attach it to the bag all right so as I said multiple times I sewed most of the way around that I did forget I need to burnish the edges on this right quick before I go sewing it to the project so I'm going to do that real quick. Just using a Berry King number one edge groover here. fastest way I know to get this done and some canvas and I will make sure to try to keep my threads down out of the way here so I don't try to burnish them to the edges and I'll just do like a half of this at a time um, you may notice these silly little blue things I've got on my thumbs uh, been having a hard time gripping needles I don't know if it's an old person thing or I just hadn't done a lot of hand sewing recently or what but anyway I got on Amazon or Janie did for me and found these little uh, finger grips and they uh, they actually were not made for my thumbs I think they were made for four fingers but I stretch them out put them on my thumbs and they really help with my hand stitching I go a lot faster 
um, I don't ever have to grab for my pliers to pull one through if I, if the hole didn't you know get fully formed or whatever. So anyway, um, there's also this kind. Um, I haven't used them yet, but I've got a whole box of them. They were considerably cheaper than these blue ones. Um, but again, I haven't I haven't used them yet to know if they were good or not. And Jamie just bought me an assortment of different kinds to see what might work for me. So anyway, I tried these out. I really like them, so there's no use to try the other ones just yet. So there it is. All nice and burnished. So um, I'm about to do something that I don't normally do very often. And that is that I'm going to kind of rough up. I did the, I lined this piece. Um, the backside's just as smooth as the outside. So I'm actually going to rough up this backside a little bit. So, and I'll rough up the area that it's going to sit on on the bag, and that way when I put the glue on them, they'll, they'll hold a little bit more firmly while I sew. Ordinarily, I don't ever rough anything up because I'm usually gluing uh, flesh side to flesh side instead of grain side to grain side, and, well, it's already roughed. So, I'm just going to kind of rough this up just a little bit here. Doesn't need a lot, but it's gonna help that stick a lot more. Because again, while I'm poking holes and stuff. Now, on your bag, if you have these two pieces facing each other, you'll see that it's roughly shaped like your thingy, your uh, your little tab that goes over them. Okay, this hasn't. I need to oil it uh, real good. This one's been heavily oiled, so their colors don't match, but they are the same leather. Um, anyway. So there's a big side and a small side. And you want to make sure, of course, that you're going big side to big side here. And uh, yeah, so it looks like that's going to line up pretty well. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rough up a little bit of an area underneath this and I'm going to glue it on. mat here and I want to make sure not to get this anywhere that that piece isn't going to be so I'm really just going to kind of do it in the middle area here and not get too close to any sides or edges because I don't want to see it poking out from under this piece All right, so we're going to let that set up for just a second. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the seam transfer over where I've already been sewing to where I haven't sewn yet. Okay, uh, one of the things I need to do is move everything over to the corner of my bench where I can hang that bag frame off the corner of my bench and it will uh, it'll lay flatly so I can poke all the holes and, and do everything that needs to happen. So let me move some stuff around here. I've got a few things piled up on the sides. Um, and uh, we're going to move it over there. So, I'll put this over here on the corner. I'll come over here, and again, I've got to move the camera a little bit. All right. So, this way I can set it flatly on the corner and have the bars uh, hanging off the sides there. Okay. okay. 
Now, I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to just lay it on there and I'm just going to basically make sure that it has an equal amount of space around all sides of it there. And I'm going to lay it down. There we go. Now, how do we get the sew line that we've been sewing through that piece too? Well, it's not fun, it's not easy, but we can do it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to go ahead and poke um, one of my stitch holes over here, just any random one, all the way through all those layers. And I'm gonna put a needle in there to hold that. Okay, because I'm going to have to kind of lift and shift parts of this, and I want, them, I want this held firmly in place. Now, I'm going to come over here, and the same hole that my thread's already in, I'm going to very, very carefully poke my all through there, making sure I don't poke the threads. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to take that needle that's already on the bottom of the piece, and I'm just going to gently lift this corner and stick it through the rest of the leather right quick. Pull it out the back side. And there we go. Now I can continue saddle stitching all the way around this piece just like I've already done. When I get to the very end, instead of going forward to overstitch my first two stitches, I'll just back stitch the previous two stitches and that's how you do that okay so i'm going to have to take my awl now i can i'm done with that little needle placement i'm going to take my awl now and i will now be poking it through all the pieces at once as i go around And then I'm going to sew this. Now this thing's getting pretty big. It's not going to fit in my stitching horse or anything like that. I'm probably just going to pull it off the edge of my bench and just kind of sew it right there. And um, yeah, and when I get around to the, the last couple of stitches there, I'll bring the video back on and um, we'll talk about the next part. All right. Whoop, sorry, I forgot to turn off the air conditioner. It'll be up in just a second. So here we are, all stitched up. Let me move the camera back to the desk. So once again, there's what we're looking at. The whole bag is, uh, we're ready to start putting some gussets on this bad boy. Um, now, I am going to forego the handles right now, and I'm going to sew the gussets on. And I'm going to put the handles on last. Uh, mainly, I just don't want them flopping around while I sew it together. I will tell you this. That is not the wisest decision. Tomorrow, I'll do a video on how to do the handles and, and put them together. Um, and honestly, I should be riveting them on first. But I want to get the gussets uh, put together for the folks that... Uh, I've, I've got to wrap this video up today. I'm running out of time. And I know a lot of folks did their handles earlier um, when they when they uh, when we were putting these things on so here's what I did next I went ahead um, yesterday when I got this thing together and I I clipped it together where the uh, the, the the frames here barely inter overlapped okay I held it together right there I drew the bottom of it down to where it was nice and even and I found that center point on the bottom and I put a little black dot right there on the edge right in the center of the bottom I'm not holding it up straight and that's why it's not in the center right this moment there we go okay I did that on both sides of the bag I, I held the the top pieces together and folded it down till I got to the bottom and found my exact centers and marked them because like we've done in other bag videos, if we don't build it from the center out, 
we're not going to uh, have a bag that sets straight. It's going to be all crooked and crazy. Okay. Then on my reverse gusset pieces, I did a similar thing, but I used a ruler. I laid them down flat like this. I used my ruler. I used my little centering ruler here. Okay, these suckers are s s seven inches across. So that means at three and a half inches on both sides of the zero. And then there's the zero right there in the middle. And I put a little black dot. I put a little black dot right, right there. You can see it. Um, so when I go to clip this bag together, all I have to do is line up my black dots and start my clips. And I'll start at the, the middle bottom and work my way up the sides. But before I can do that, I need to mark my stitch area on the bag itself. Okay, so I need to clear off some space so I can lay the whole bag out and mark my uh, stitch area along the sides. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work on the very edge of the table um, that's facing me here, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because, of course, this bag has the big frame on it that kind of hangs off, and that just makes it easier for me to obtain the straight line that I need to make my, uh, my stitch line, okay? Um, I don't like grooving this leather, so I'm just going to use a ruler as a straight line, a straight edge, and I'm gonna mark my stitch holes going up it. I will groove these pieces right here. And no matter how much of it's actually stitched to the side of the bag, I'm going to stitch it from, from that bottom stitch right there all the way up to that st top stitch right there so that it'll be a continuous stitch around these panels. So I do need to groove those two little areas, okay? I'm a stitch groover here. take these silly little blue things off my fingers here so that I can work a little bit better. Like I said, they're not made for my thumb, so I really got to squeeze them on there and it's, uh, it's a little much. <laughs> I'm going to take the brightness down just a little bit. Maybe that'll help, help us see here. I apologize for that. I normally try to test that early in the video. All right, so I'm just going to take my ruler and lay it along these sides and my overstitch wheel and I'm going to go about 3 sixteenths of an inch from the edge and I'm going to mark my stitches. It doesn't need to be right up on the edge. And uh, my goal too is um, where these stitch lines go. I'm going to kind of try to make that a part of it, where all these stitches come together in those spots. And again, right now I'm just marking the, the oil tan part, but I'm about to mark also the, um, the veg tan area. do that exact same thing on the other side uh, again I'll make this will be two separate stitch lines right here okay I don't want to crawl up the side of the, the the veg tan there so I will stop my stitch there and then start again right there and there will be just that little bitty less than an eighth of an inch gap in between those two stitches so two separate stitch areas So 
now I've got to flip it around and do the exact same thing. I'll go a little bit quicker because I'm not going to stop and explain everything, but groove the two areas, roll my stitch lines in the four areas, three areas. just a little bit accidentally that's okay we still got a straight line going there if your ruler moves just get it back on track you just uh, stop right where you are leave your stitch little uh, stitch roller in place move your ruler and then get back on it that's all you gotta do whatever you do don't try to fudge it without some sort of a straight edge because you're just not gonna it'll look straight and then when you sew it it won't look straight anymore all right so you can um, contact cement this if you want where you would contact cement all around that the inside of that gusset there uh, about half the width of that gusset and then you would do the exact same thing corresponding on the insides of this now, I do want to warn you, if you do contact cement it, you may want to clip it into place first. One, make sure it's going to fit right like it ought to, but then two, it doesn't go quite all the way to the top here. Um, and so you, you'll want to know where to stop the glue. All right. But clipping this thing together is very, very simple. Um, Again, we, we created that little black dot right there, and those two black dots are going to correspond. And I'm doing this entire thing looking over at the computer because it's facing away from me. So I'm looking at my uh, recording screen here on my bowl of clips. And I'm going to clip it right there. Okay, off a little bit just so that I can make sure my dots are lined. Okay. Then I'll clip it on the other side of that dot. And I'm going to just follow the bag around to do this. Um, I'm probably going to try to sew one side without um, without uh, gluing it and see how it works. And uh, depending on how well it goes, I, I may try to glue the other side. Who knows? All right, so when it comes to the corner, very easy. I'm gonna stand this piece up, hold this piece next to it. And again, I'm, I'm sorry if my hands go a little backwards or whatever, but I'm, I'm looking at my screen and so that you can have the best vantage point here. And I'm just gonna keep on slipping her together, okay? I'm not sure if I'm talented enough to do this from this view. Hopefully my head doesn't get in the way with what I'm about to do here. There we go. So one right around that corner there. And then every couple of inches, I'll just throw another one up or you can fill it all the way to capacity there. Uh, like I said, my friend Tony uh, Allen Bernier is the one that uh, showed me these clips. And when he makes something, I mean, he those clips are touching. He puts a thousand of them on there, but I get it. I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just don't do it because it takes a lot of time. You do want to make sure whatever clips you're using that they don't mar up your leather. Okay. And I'm just going to clip this sucker all the way to the top. Every couple of inches I'll throw another clip. And 
what you'll find is if you'll go ahead and clip up both sides of the bag or both ends of the bag okay you will find that this thing sets up pretty nicely for you to sew it all right so i gotta do the other side over here set it up on its end and bring the camera up a little bit all right now we both have a good view just putting my little clippies on making sure there's not any big gaps anywhere or big bubbles where one one uh, piece of material is bigger than the other clipping it it'll look just like it did in the very beginning of the video because like I said I clipped it together last night just to make dang sure all these pieces fit together right because nobody likes a surprise when they're actually recording a video all right so there's that side now I get to do that again on the other side so I will Take and clip those bottom two dots right on top of each other. All right, and then on this side, I'm going to go ahead and just throw a clip up here on the on the top, just to hold it together so it's easier to put together and I'm not fighting it the whole dead gum time. All right, so it'll just be some arbitrary place here like this. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side and it'll have some support while I actually place them correctly. So once again, I'm just clipping around. Gone forever. <laughs> All right. So I was actually a pretty good guess with uh, where I threw that clip there. It lined up pretty well. I'm going to push up from the inside a little bit and uh, make sure that these two sides or these two uh, pieces of leather are flush up against each other. It'll make for a much prettier finished bag, of course. Lines, edges and lines actually match up. So there we are, folks. What I'm going to do, I will start my sew line right here. I'm going to start it and go all the way around the brown leather and stop it over here. And then again, I'm going to start it right here and go up to the top on all four of these pieces. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on both sides. And that's where we're going to... Uh, that's our, our homework, I guess you can say. I am really trying to finish um, this video series up in the next two days uh, because we are shipping out this coming month's mystery boxes and it's time to start that one now. So a day in the life of Aaron. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we need to just stitch that around. Um, I'm going to take my awl and I'll poke a few holes at a time and then stitch them, then poke them, then stitch them. That's how I usually do something like this. This could be done on a, uh, I've done it on the Class 26, 
uh, with the other bag that's over here and it works very well but again I'm hand sewing this whole one so yeah so there it is folks that's uh, part four of this video by the time uh, we come back for part five I will show you how I build my handles um, and uh, we'll get them on there and uh, we'll do some edge work and we will figure out how to um, put the rivets in the bars so that they hold together like they should and we're going to be about done so until then i uh, hope everybody uh, enjoys the project again i'm aaron heiser of makers weather supply and uh, thank you so much for watching have a great day